Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome back. We are here, and I can't say on the stand, because there's more than one stand, isn't there, Paul? There's two. There's, there's two. two. We're here with Matt Silra, and Paul and I are going to divide off in this live, aren't we, here at Mac 2024? We are. We're going to divide our time. I'm going to be looking at this side of uh, the Matsura, the blue machines, who are going to be looking at five-axis machines, horizontal machining centres. Automation is clearly the theme here because we're going to be looking at the Muratech machine as well. And then you're going to look at I'm going the... additive. I'm going additive. And there is a lot to see over there. So I'm quite excited because it's not just about the machines, but it's what they're doing with their team members that is really making waves in industry right now. Very, very exciting. How are your feet? Uh, they're, they're hurting. They're hurting. <laughs> hurting. I think what's going to be exciting about this stream is we've got lots of people participating. I know that I'm going to be interviewing four people here uh, on the subtractive side. And then I think you've got three. I've got John, Joe and Lee. So over yeah. the course of the next 20 minutes or 30 minutes, we're going to be talking to seven people from uh, Matsura. Uh, and we're going to start with Dominic Seminario, who's coming shortly. Now, if you have got any comments or any questions uh, during the stream, then put them uh, onto the social media page that you're actually watching this. And we'll try and get to them, if not through or during the stream, but at the end of the stream. Yeah, 200,000 people this has been streamed to. It's, I have it's to add that so exciting. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, are you coming to Mac? Can you not make every single day but you can make a few well come and join us because we've got a stand as well so come and see us but also come and see uh, the new technology that these stands have got to offer i go out to quite a few case studies with matsura and the success that they've had in recent years is massive yeah a, a lot of that would be it's clearly down it's down to the kit that they supply a absolutely but with automation running through the veins of this company that's yes. really been, I suppose, the backbone to this, their success of which we'll see. People talk about this brand. They've, they've, they've brought something very, very special to industry and they've done it the right time and it's working. Absolutely. And they've expanded on it a lot. There's some new models that we're going to uh, we're gonna see today. Uh, as Lindsay said, uh, keep tuned to our channel throughout the rest of this week. We'll be live streaming every day uh, from Mac. If you can't make the show, you should come to the show, but if you can't make it here in Birmingham, and stay tuned to MTD uh, CNC. Do you want me to take that microphone? Absolutely. I'll go and speak to Dominic Seminario, take a look around this part of the stand, and then I'll be able to see you And shortly. I'll meet you on the additive stand. Great stuff. Now, you'll know this gentleman that um, I'm going to introduce you to now. He's been featured on our channels a lot over uh, recent years. It is um, Mr. Dominic Seminario. Dom, was that an order? Well, you know, I was trying. <laughs> Good to see you again. How are you keeping? Very well. My, my voice is a bit struggling at the moment, so uh, a bit busy day. It has been a busy day. Well, I'm going to move this side so we can, we can get you very, clearly very in shot. Day. Um, we're going to look at all the machines here that you've got on yep. your stand. Fabulous stand. I have to congratulate you Thank you very you much. Well, that. let's thank Ian, really. He's the guy, that, He's the guy behind uh, it. We just sign the checks, yeah. right? We let Ian do all the work. Um, what's the messaging from you guys here at the show this week? Well, this week, obviously, what we tried to do this week is show all the products that we sell. So, as you know, we've got the CNC stand and the additive stand. So we've got like this differentiator now, CNC business, additive business, which is all under obviously Matsura. So what we wanted to do with this machine um, is show people that we do a larger multi plate horizontal than the H plus 300. So the H plus 300 for many, many years, as you well know, has been a success story. Um, with the increase in volume that's come back to the UK, we've seen over the last three years, we've been selling and stocking a lot more of the 500 pallet machine, with six and 12 pallets. It's a horizontal machine. It's horizontal, it? multi-pallet. Yeah. It's obviously on the same platform as an MX, a MAM. All the technology is the same. The tool magazines, the software, blah, 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 blah. It's all the same. Um, I, I want to pick your brains as well about the success of the business because we'll look at the models independently shortly and we are going to take a tour of the whole stand and look at them. Thank you. But um, me and Lindsay just opened this stream talking about the amount of machines that you guys have been selling in recent years. There's, there's, there's obviously a reason for that. But, I mean, automation has been a big part of that, hasn't it, for you? Well, for us... And how I'm, successful have you been? Oh, 100%. Well, so automation for us has always been the backbone and the key to our product portfolio. So if you, if you remember the MAM 7235V 30 years ago was a 32 pallet 5 axis. No one else had that machine. So every machine that we now produce as a form of pallet system, okay, so... In the UK, all I stock is multi-pallet machines. Okay, so whether it's 10 pallets, 12 pallets, 15 pallets, 24 pallets, 32 pallets, blah, 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 blah. Right, so, so when we sell that technology, we're selling the return on investment from the unmanned running. The ease of leave, leaving jobs set up and obviously being able to make one, make a thousand. So 
that's the message that we're always putting out. And I think, you know, with the ability of your platform that you've allowed us to, to obviously be on. Thank, thank you. you. Um, and the compliments this week have been great, by the way, especially on my podcast. Right, yeah. In fact, that guy was actually complimenting me on my so podcast. So if you haven't seen, and I don't want to stop you on your flow, <laughs> but I did a fabulous 45-minute uh, podcast with Dom uh, on our Bench to Boardroom podcast where we find out, not necessarily about what we're talking about today. But <laughs> no, about but that's what he was actually complimenting me on. So, so obviously, you know, the MX420 is a slightly bigger version. Now, the Murata business. So one thing I do want to plug, if I may, on this, on this podcast and, and interview is that We've gone about the Murata business in a different way in the last three years. You know, we've grown that business now by 300% in three years, right? So to the volume that we're selling. And this week, that MWR 120 has been already a storm to the point that when I come back in two years' time, there might be a lot more Murotex on the stand. The additive business has grown significantly. We, wait, we started our additive business six years ago. Is it six years? Six years Gosh. ago. That business is now representing 25% of our turnover. So that is just completely on the way and, up. And it's important to say that's not because this side is shrunk. No, 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 it's, no, no, it's, no, no. It's, it's grown the business. So, yeah. so the growth that we see, we're sustaining the Matsura business, which is the numbers that we always talk about. That keeps, obviously, our president, Mr. Matsura, very happy. We are slowly increasing that market share per year. But, you know, it's hard to keep selling that volume. So how do we grow? Well, we grow with other products. So the, the turn center solution that we're selling, obviously, on the Murata platform, the Muratech, we're selling it in the same way. It's an automated turning solution. You know, it's almost, it's a MAM 72 in the lane, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how we sell it, okay? And, the, and on the additive side, the way that we supply, supply the machine, the backup, the service, the attention to detail, the TLC, the match zero way, we're taking market share in that. You know, we're not the newbie on the block yeah. in additive. You know, we're, yeah, we're yeah, here yeah. now and we're here to stay. And, and Lindsay's going to be on that stand uh, shortly on the additive side, taking a tour and having a look at all of those elements. The uh, machine I'm going to be talking to Paul about, the 420, is uh, a new model that you introduced it's, about it's, a year or so ago. Yeah, so, so basically the 330, again, best-selling machine, you know. Um, and the 330 is a 10 pallet, 10 pallet, 330 diameter, 300 high, five axis, simultaneous machine. Best selling How machine. Many you sold? I, I was trying to work the numbers out earlier. I think in the five years we've had the product, in excess of 120 units in the UK. So Matsura cannot meet the, the, the world demand with that machine. Yeah. They're currently undergoing extensions in Japan to make more MX330s. Um, what do you like about these shows, Don? What, lose, 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 losing like. my voice. <laughs> Thanks. Bit like we got you early, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do I love? I, what amazes me is how many people I know, you know, and I think, and the compliments that we're getting about not only the stand, the products, but us as a business. And I think we work hard, Roger, I and the team, we work very hard to deliver a service, which is for us priority. The most important. When people walk on and give us that compliment, it's very humbling. So, you know, to meet everybody that we know, comes and spends a few minutes with us, I think that's... I knew I was going to be tired this week. Yeah. I'm already tired. You, you, you accepted that before yeah. you even started. Two, half past two, day two, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm tired. So, yeah, so thank you. Great stuff. Well, I'm going to take your microphone, Dom, because I'm going to go and see uh, Paul, and we're going to talk about the 420. Thank Catch you very much, guys. Yeah, all thank best. you. Thank you. So there you heard it from uh, Dominic Seminario. I'm now going to catch up with Paul Collinson, who's going to talk to us about one of the products that Dom mentioned. Uh, Thank you, Paul. Good afternoon, Paul. Good afternoon, Paul. Um, let's talk about this 420. This, MS420. So yeah. the MS420 was launched 2021. If you keep the microphone oh, sorry. up, sorry. Predominantly based on the success of the MX330, which was launched in 2017. Again, that was launched because of the MX520 um, inclusion in the market about 2014. Obviously, the MX520 was just a single tail machine, so we incorporate the MX330 with 10 pallets, and now we're onto the MX420 with 10 pallets. 15k spindle, 92 10 pallet machine with a 420 working envelope by 300 milli high. Now, the, the, oh, wow, you must have you, you got all that I've read, down I've to read the team. Porsche. <laughs> I read the Porsche. If you keep the yeah. microphone up to Sorry, your mouthful, no, so, yep. so the unmanned run is everything that these machines yes. are about, isn't yep. it? It's about keeping that spindle going Running. for as long yeah. as possible yeah. and what are the problems and challenges people might face with doing that i mean is what one of the biggest challenges for me was customers saying i need volume 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 
hundreds, thousands. But these machines are designed for the small to medium batches, runners, repeaters. And because we've got the, the 92 carousel down there, what the guys do is when they reprogram new components, they'll try to use the same library. And what we'll do is we'll also try to use the same work holding device, maybe make the billet bigger so we can use less work holding device. That was the main thing around the second times, you know. Have we got enough tools? Have we got new pallets? Um, if you keep the market now, Sorry. let's open this door now, Paul, if yep, you can. That's okay, yep. This is what I uh, we're okay for that this position, is what I really Paul, yeah. like about yep. seeing in this machine, the creativity yes. that you guys have got when it comes to your yep. fixturing and your work holding. Yep. Um, it's not just 10 pallets, is it? <laughs> what we're it's not here. 10 pallets. I mean, obviously what we can do here is we've got the chick vice, which can hold 12 parts. 3-6 each side, but I've recently been involved in a project with a customer where rather than doing one billet per time, we put strips on so we can do a multiple parts. Mm. So that then reduces the cost for the actual fixtures and we can use, I mean, we can use stuff like this or we can use sort of mighty bites to grip the components. Mm. So this sort of pallet design gives the customer the ability to design his own fixtures. You don't necessarily need to buy them, but this, this equipment is very good to buy but it gives the customer the opportunity to make his own. And, and that's where we can assist with a little bit, you know, with the drawings. And, and I think what you're seeing here as well is what you see there, Chick, clearly for yeah, adding well more components. well-known brand, yeah. But if you look to the right of that, where you've got this kind of yellow the working drum, envelope, yeah. showing you the working envelope. It's, it's a huge Quite working a envelope there. there. A very lot of capacity. Also, what we, we don't always preach is, but you can get bigger parts on if you put it at a certain angle to go through the pallet changer. Mm. So if you're maybe doing, or even if you're doing one or two parts, just put them through the door. Yeah. If it's a small batch, of course. And it's a small footprint as well. I mean, Very, very small footprint. We yeah. take a step back and you can see, you know, you, 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 you're getting a lot of components through, yes. in a, yep. in a, which is so important very, to Very, very appealing footprint, you know. So this obviously can give the customer the ability to buy more machines yeah. rather than going for these large pallets. And on that you know. point, what is your area, Paul, and how much My, success do you have if you take a step this way? How much success do you have with this type of... You know, my, the 420, the 330. We heard from Dom how many machines you've sold at the 330. My area is predominantly the northwest, Burnley, Manchester, up into Scotland. I would say that the MX330 has been the most popular machine that I've sold over the years. It's a good entry level, five axes, fully specced up for unmanned running. What we also got is we've got the, the RIM software, remote intelligent machine monitoring system, which runs a lot alongside the machine as well. Which I was going to say that must be really important because you... Very, very important. If you're not around, you've got to make sure that when the machine... You've got to make sure it's running. You've got to be yep. able to work out if there is a problem or yes. diagnose things and solve issues. Yep. And I'm assuming that's where, where RIMS this comes is, this in. This is where it comes in. So if, if, if one of our customers sets up the pallet system on a Friday, 10 different parts or a multiple amount of parts, puts the soft, uh, sorry, he puts a schedule in here, the software then, then see it, right... Tool 5 is missing, or Tool 5 will not have the life to be able to complete the full 10 pallets. So then the, the guy can go around the side, change the tool, put it in, and away we go. And also, if you have, most people finish early in the northeast on a Friday. Today? <laughs> well, allegedly, don't anyway. Tell my I don't. That. <laughs> um, but what they can do is, once they've left the premises, if the machine stops, they'll receive an email. So we can send a guy back in, reset the machine away. Perfect. Paul, I'm going to take that microphone off you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much for your time, Thank you for your time. It's been a really good insight into the MX420. That's Thank Paul Collinson. Much, Paul. Uh, you can contact Paul if you are uh, in his territory and looking at an automation solution like the MX420. Uh, next, we move on to uh, the machine that Dominic was telling us about, the Muratech. Um, I'm going to be speaking to Simon Higgs, who again is a familiar face on our channel. Good afternoon, Hi, Simon. Good afternoon. If you could just keep the microphone yep. to, your, is that okay? uh, to your mouth. Yeah, that's yep. very good. Very good. Um, Simon. We've looked at the, the five-axis horizontal machining centre, of okay. which you participate in the sales of. But this particular machine, uh, it's been turning heads here, isn't it? Can it you has. tell us what it is? Yeah, certainly. So this is our Muratech MWR120 machine, which is a, a billet and cast in loading machine. We've got uh, two spindles, um, two turrets, and uh, a twin gantry system. So we're loading in from the left-hand side. It's quite interesting looking at the, this front-facing spindle. Yes. Or, uh, method what's the the reason for that and what's the advantages so it allows us to load and unload very quickly so we can we can load and unload within five seconds on here um, it also means we can transfer the part between the two spindles um, out of the cut in time so as an, an opposed spindle you would be transferring between the two spindles this we can do 
whilst the machine's actually running and cutting. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this from a, from a volume perspective, which, which this machine would be about. What about complexity of part? Um, you know, the, the configuration of the axes. How many have you got? You've got Y-axis and all that type of yeah. stuff. So this, this is a four-axis machine with Y-axis, so plus or minus 60 mil on the Y-axis, so a very large Y-axis we've got here. Allows us, with two 10-station turrets, allows us to multi-load tooling, um, and we can then use maybe two turning tools, for example, per station using the Y-axis to, to use them, so we can then set up sister tooling um, to run for longer periods. So volume and complex parts at the same time, possibly. Certainly, yes. Um, that gantry is moving at a, a pace, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is, yes. Uh, yep. and, um, yeah, and we've got a quicker one as well, have you? Um, a carbon fibre model. So 200 metres a minute this will run at. Um, we can load with a 14 pallet stocker we've got on the left-hand side here. We can multi-load well, billets. Let, well, let's have a look at this. I mean, I know the camera's moving over to it. but this, So this is where... Yeah, this is where your billets, your, your, your raw material goes or your finished parts. Are you, are you from one end and finish the other side? Is that how you do it? Yeah, so we've got options depending on the com customer's parts, really. So um, if the parts lend themselves to being restocked, we can bring them back here. If the customer's not looking for metal on metal, then we can unload to the right-hand side. So ultimately, we can take a raw billet from here, load up 10 take that up 20 and then out so it becomes an automation line okay so if we look at this end here we've got some uh, inspection happening here then yeah so the part's been finished it's been uh, yeah put here to be checked yeah so um, so this is just an example of some of the extra um, options that we can add to the machine so we're inspecting the component here then automatically updating the offsets for the next component coming through so we, if we have a no good part, we can update that so that the next part is good. We can then unload the no good part to a different section so that it, it's set up that way. Um, we can also then add options, for example, deburring or wash stations. So it makes, depending on what the customer's looking to do, we can take that process out of the cutting time to reduce the overall tack time of the component. I mean, what we see here is the MWR120, but... There's a lot more models, isn't there, available from you? Certainly. And don't you sell yes. more machines in the automotive industry than anybody else? So there's some pretty good statistical yeah. facts. That's right, yeah. Muratech supply more into the automotive than any other lathe manufacturer. And I suppose you, by, by that statement alone, shows you their reliability and their speed because they're two things that are critical in that sector. Most definitely, yes. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. OK, Simon, thank you very much for your time. I'm going to take that microphone off. Okay. Are you having a good show before we...? Fantastic. I've sold any machines yet? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, thank you very much for your time, and uh, see you soon. See you soon. Thank you. So there you can see the turning solution available um, from Matsu in the, in the, uh, the Muratech machine. Incredible piece of technology. Uh, we now move on to speak with Mark Cumberland, who, again, another familiar face on our channel. Hi, Mark. Hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm very Long good. Long time you? no see. Yeah. How is the south of England these days? Oh, brilliant. Hot and sunny, as always. <laughs> is it? And are you still <laughs> selling plenty of machines down there? Yes, occasionally, yes. Now that we're doing really well, south coast is... Is, is, is still building uh, year after year. You know, last year we had probably our best year ever on the south coast, um, and it's yeah, just goes uh, straight strength. For you though, what is the big markets down there? Where um, it's still generally subcon. Mm. Um, aerospace is coming back for sure, but generally it's it's still subcontractors that are investing in Matsura's type of automation. Um, you know, just to give themselves more hours of, of unmanned running through the night running. Yeah, typical of what we do. Yeah, keep them competitive. Yeah, now, yeah. what's interesting about this machine is this is the MX850. Now, this is a, a single table machine, um, and there's no automation on here, but it would be automation ready. Uh, it is, yes. Um, the MX850 is the largest machine in the MX range. Um, it was the, the second of the MX uh, machines to come out probably around about 10 years ago now. Um, and it it's put a us big into old machine, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's it's put us into a, a as you say, a, a, an area of machining uh, in terms of size of components. Um, on this machine, we can take a component 850 diameter by 400 tall, half a ton on the table. Um, you know, we have customers machining um, engine blocks and heads uh, on this machine and spinning it and getting to all five faces. Yeah, I can I can imagine. I think I saw one of these at one of your customers actually in Scotland. And I can't. Do they have a four PC with this machine? Yes. It's not often that uh, nowadays we have uh, a single table machine in stock, um, but um, we have a number at the moment which uh, we're promoting. But yeah, the majority of what we sell nowadays of this type of machine would be a four pallet uh, version, 
and that comes with either 90 or 120 tools of standard, either 15 or 20,000 RPM. This is a 20,000 RPM machine. And then all of the ancillaries that you'd usually get with a Matsura, mm. so up to 70 bar coolant, FSC swarf management system, uh, mist extraction, tool length measurement, everything. And when you take your area and we talk, I mean, how many machines will you sell? I know the majority of machines have automation, but that, that would be all, almost something that is the norm now then for you, isn't it, I would guess? Yes. I mean, I haven't sold a single table machine in the southeast for, I don't know, probably approaching four years now. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. It is, yeah. And what do, what do you, uh, tell me a little bit about your control system as well, because I know that's across the range. Um, yeah, explain uh, the benefits and features on that. With the latest uh, Matsura uh, GTEC 30i control, 31i control, sorry, uh, it's a FANUC based system, but it runs Matsura front end software. Uh, we run our own tool life management systems on it, and all of the maintenance. Um, criteria is catered for within the Matsura side of the Which software. Which I suppose is really important when you look at the long It is, yeah, and it's far runs. more intuitive for an operator to be able to um, you know, recover tool changes, things like that, through the, the Matsura guided um, uh, system than being able to do it in a conventional way. Good stuff. Mark, um, really good insight into the MX850. I'm going to take that microphone no off you. No problem at all. Thank you very much. I hope you have in, a good show for the rest of yeah, it. Yeah, you too. Enjoy right. it. Thank you. So there we have Mark Cumberland. So that's the... Uh, the uh, machining centre side, that's the, uh, the subtractive side of the Matsura stand. I'm now going to hand you over to um, Lindsay, who's with uh, John, and they're going to talk you or take you on a tour around the additive side. Here you go, John. Good luck. Hey, thank you John and I have been patiently waiting for all of you. And, and we just? I've just found out where he lives. I found out a lot about you, John. OK, so this is John Porter. How long have you been with Matsura now? I've only been with the company a couple of months. Oh, a couple of months. A, a new hire, yeah. Right, this is really exciting. So before we, well, we're going to have a tour of the additive side of Matsura now. And I've been to their facility, it's incredible. I'll tell you more about it in a few moments' time. But before then, you're a new hire yep. for yep. Matsura. Tell me why, because your background is so important here. Well, I've, I've had the benefit of being in the additive manufacturing sector for about 25 plus years now. So it goes all the way back to the late 90s when I was involved with James Dyson in the beginning of his business. That's a big brand. It's a reasonably large brand nowadays, yeah. <laughs> yes. And it was a, he was a very early adopter of 3D printing, but it's allowed me a sort of a gateway into the technology, and it's allowed me to stay in this sector for the most of my career. And I've kind of moved into the specialism of, of metal 3D printing, but I've been asked to join the, the Matsura business to really look at their longer-term strategic growth in this sector because they've already made fantastic headroads into supporting and supplying product into the additive manufacturing sector here in the UK, and I think they've taking a market lead with some of the products they're selling and it's fantastic but I think what they recognize is that my background comes with a network so they've essentially bought into that network which is I'm very happy to do because they also recognize that there are a lot of sectors and a lot of potential customers that need a little bit more nurturing a little bit more time to make a decision there is risk involved in taking on additive manufacturing and everybody understands that yes so they need the benefit of my experience and the team's experience and the application team's experience to really capitalize on the asset they're about to invest in, understand the technology, understand the benefits, and really make the right decision for them as a business. Because what I've also seen in this sector is if you if you supply incorrectly, bad news travels fast. Yes. So if you have a, an adopter of the technology that hasn't been well briefed, hasn't been well trained, doesn't really understand the benefit of what they're buying, they can make mistakes. In my opinion, um, what you've just taught me over the last 10 minutes, I think you're going to influence people quite heavily into this because of your knowledge and experience. Can I just ask, what is it that you feel industry needs to know about additive? Because sometimes it's a bit of confidence. Would you agree or not? It's been a bit of confidence, absolutely. The industry has been very long on promise. There's been a lot of hype around the technology. There's, a lot of, there's been a lot of suggestion about what it can achieve. But in reality... There's been a lot of instances where it's, it's ultimately been a bit of a solution chasing a problem or, or trying to identify a problem. And what we're finding now, certainly within the group of the Matsura products, is that we're getting there. We're really very close now to offering this as a solution for mass manufacturing. And that really has always been the ultimate promise of this technology. Because a lot of people thought of it as, um, how would we describe it, like a prototype? prototype or, or, yeah, 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 yeah. Exa exactly yeah. that. We're on the same page. And then now what you're say saying is, it's the users. They're producing a product that goes out to market because we've done case studies with Matsu with the HP range, and we'll talk about a few of the ranges in a moment. But it's the end user product that's happening now. Is that it what's is. happening? It is. It's, it's very symptomatic of what's gone in the past. Is that the process will produce a lot of parts, but parts are only part of the story. We, we talk about products; they're much more useful. They're yes. much more saleable. 
but the technology has only produced a, a part that ultimately needs more work, needs yeah. more post-processing, it needs fine tolerancing to make it perform as it should. But we're now moving into a space, I know you're going to speak to my colleague Joe in yeah, a little while, are. because we've got opportunity here with new technologies that actually produce parts that you can simply put in the bag and sell. Yes, and we've seen that on camera proven. Yeah. Right, I'm going to take you down the stand now because you've got some components here, but materials wise, yep. um, what are we talking about? Because is it, we mentioned HP, but there's other brands that you represent, isn't there? Yeah, I'm going to talk to you now about desktop metal. Okay. It's still a bit of a mystery to some people, but in reality, you can 3D print metal. It's still, a, it's still something that people haven't conceptually understood. Yes. But again, there's a lot of history in that. What we have here is a solution made by desktop metal. Right. You could argue this is a sort of a gateway to this technology. In terms of the environment this machine runs in, it's very safe, it's very easy to manage, it's very easy to have from a health and safety perspective, and, and to run in, a, you don't need to necessarily run in a laboratory with all of the typical sort of restraints of the of powder management and all the other troublesome parts that come with the metal business. Yeah, because, you know, people don't, you know, obviously, we're in manufacturing, a lot of it is, of course, um, subtractive, so to, it's new, it's, it's unknown, but it's people having the confidence to be able to... It's all about confidence. Yeah. This technology allows you to design in a new creative way. It allows mm -hmm. you to, to undertake new performance of parts, but ultimately there are risks attached to that. But that's education. It's education, but people do need, need to realise it comes with no rearview mirror. Once you start to adopt and adapt this technology, you have to go forward with it. It's very difficult to go back and say, we're going to make this in a more conventional way because you've lost that opportunity. But you really shouldn't lose the opportunity to use additive. It's a wonderful process. Oh. And it's finally coming It's finally coming to Stom. John, I feel like we're going to see you on our screens a bit more. Maybe. A lot more. <laughs> if, if this has been OK for you. But I think we're going to see you on our screens a lot more because I think you've got a lot to teach industry. I hope so. Yeah. I totally agree as well. Definitely. <laughs> right, I'm going to steal your microphone Thanks, from Lindsay. you now. There Thank you, you for your time nice. today. Right, now, I don't know if you know this, but we've done some videos. I'll go. Voila. We've done some videos at Matsuri's headquarters in uh, Colville, Leicestershire. And uh, their facility is quite interesting because it's not like they've, they've, they've got their facility for their main machines, but they've built a facility on the side. But they've not just built it and just put machines in. You've built it as though you're a manufacturer of components so you've learned everything you've learned all the setups what is it you've done explain to everyone exactly what you've done there well that's it we set the uh, the facility up to basically yeah mimic what people potentially go through in uh, in, in production so we come up against all the maybe the issues that customers may come across uh, during their time in manufacture and what we've done is basically we're, we're users of the machine basically yes yeah. so you've got all the answers haven't you yeah so, Joe, tell me a bit about your role there. So, I am AM sales manager for the Midlands and Southern region. Um, and I have been for, what, six years now? Is it good? Are you, is it busy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really good. We've had the best start to a year we've ever, uh, ever had in AM. So, it's, yeah, great start to the year. I think you're going to because I think, as John just said, it's confidence. Now, we were talking about user products yep. on the last uh, uh, piece with John. And you've got some here to show me. And these... I think you're pushing the boundaries here, aren't you, of what you can do? Well, that's it. I mean, the part that you've got there is uh, an AFO, so that's an orthotic device. Um, every patient is different. So what uh, 3D printing uh, is very good for is bespoke applications. Uh, so if you've got a patient's uh, scan data, each patient is different. What we're able to do is map that data onto a, a generic sort of design and basically make it completely bespoke to the uh, customer. So and that's a product that's actually being uh, sold into the uh, NHS and other I think this is incredible. Of, uh, clin clinical. We're, we're at uh, such an exciting, I think you'd agree, we're, we're at such an exciting time because, you know, manufacturing previously, you'd think about prototyping when you're talking about these machines, yep. wouldn't you? You'd think about, you know, and then you'd have to go, oh, okay, so how can I explain? You'd have a standard product and then yep. you'd have the other things that you manufacture to make it that modular. But actually you're going from the ground up with a totally unique bespoke product yeah, that's to suit. It. That's, I mean, that's, most cool. of the, that's it. Most of the stuff we're doing now is production. If you look at our sort of growth rate um, in the UK versus the rest of Europe, uh, the UK is tracking at 40% growth year on year, which is the highest rate out of any of the region for, for HP 3D printing. And a lot of that is driven by production. And so where's your position then? So you sell HP 
machines. Yeah. But you're you're at a point now where you're not just selling ones and twos into companies, are you now? Because of the success of what you've done so no, far. No, that's it. We've got. I mean, one of our customers uh, has just ordered his seventh machine. And that, that's in the space of, yeah, about three years. So. What, why? What, why is that what's happening there? Well, they're basically there? a subcontract manufacturer, which is, just, yeah, in the 3D world, they're called a three, uh, 3D print viewer. Yeah? Um, and basically, they take work from anyone and everyone. Um, and there's just such a high demand for, for 3D printing now. That, I mean, Replacing I'm... lower volume sort of injection molding applications, maybe uh, applications where they were using CNC, but they didn't actually need the complexity that you get with a CNC finished component, uh, and they've moved to maybe 3D printing as an alternative. I think we're going to see a lot more of these uh, machines on camera and yourself on camera yeah, as well, yeah, just hopefully. the same as John, because I think we're, I think you'd agree we're a kind of a change in the marketplace. Yeah, it's definitely a pivotal moment. Yeah, yeah definitely. Thanks, yeah. Joe. I'm no, going to steal that from you. <laughs> thanks for going on camera. Uh, we've got lots of interviews of people because I think the thing is here, I mean, just look at this. Just look at this component. This is so cool. Right, uh, Lee, here we go. We're here. There's so, there's so much to see. Uh, so, Lee, um, Tell me what you're doing different in industry then, because you've got, we've seen the metal printer, we've That's talked right. about HP, but there's yep. other, what differentiates the printers that you're using? Basically the printers that we're using, the end usable, industrial application printers is what we're, we're looking, uh, looking to do here with, with, with our equipment. Uh, so it's, it's, it's managing difficult materials that other people don't tend to look at for 3D applications, and it's a way of maximizing maximizing efficiency reducing on, on material wastage and, and just producing them in a, in a 3d application am i right in thinking so you know if you if you say let's say like the hp range that yes. will provide a certain material so yep. to market um and then other ranges that you have it's like the, the robots over there That's right they're looking after other materials as well yeah these this this is a, a different material range to the hp this is this is classed as a super polymer so you've got materials that uh, work with it, extreme heat, uh, mm -hmm. corrosion resistance, chemically resistant materials, high temperatures. Uh, so that's that's the differentiator here between them. You know, it's so cool because you know, uh, uh, additive Matsura, you know your stuff. You've proven it in your own, I'd say, shop or uh, facility. And let, let's go and have a look at one of the machines yes. actually, because we've let's looked that, at yeah. some components. Um, but here's one. Now this is this is the smallest. This is yes. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. yeah the baby, if you want to call it that. It's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's the, there's two series of machine. You've got the professional and the production series. Yes, and this is the smaller one. It's an ideal, ideal machine for uh, jigs and fixtures and smaller applications for for high for, for the high temperature materials such as carbon peak, uh, peak, um, and carbon PA. So the the very very strong materials. In some respect, they're stronger than like aluminium. Oh, re so, really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, lightweightness is, is 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 the is the thing here as well, and it's yeah, it's just looking at it, uh, the just from a from a perspective of different applications in industry, it's just about removing that. And as I say, I talk about chemical resistancy, I talk about heat resistancy and corrosion resistancy. They're starting to use these in applications such as oil and gas because it's just it's just a different way of doing things. I think it's so exciting. I think there's a lot to it learn is, here. Yeah, yeah. It, it is, yeah. and um, it's all about, if I'm right in thinking, user products now. You know, I think, I think previously people would be thinking about prototyping and having yeah. tweaks, but now it's products that yeah. people can make from there into a bag and That's sold. Right. That's it. But smaller, you go into the larger machine. You've got, we've now these. got up to a meter cube wow. machine in the in there. So you're using for the oil and gas industry the larger parts. You can see here. Just, just looking at that, this this material is expensive to machine and manufacture with other ways. Mm -hmm. So by doing this, they're, they're using a minimum amount of material, and then actually they can be post machined as well. Oh, so CNC. Well, of course. So the combination course. between what Matsura do with just, additive manufacturing and CNC, it's a win-win. I think we're going to leave it on that. It's seamless, isn't it? Right. Okay. Thank you, Thank you so much for your time, Thank you. Lee. Thank you, really exciting. I think. There's a lot to learn here, and I think Matsu have really embraced it, and they've got uh, the professionals on it now. Can I please? Can I just show? Can I just? Yeah. Show? The, don't you show this? Come here. Come here and have a look at this. So I've been informed that this is produced, but in its form. 
so if I can pick if I can pick this up, this is produced and printed in its form. So it's not added together, it's produced as one on uh, printed. That, I mean, this is probably one of the coolest things uh, this, I, I've seen at the show so far. This whole stand is, is exactly that, isn't it? It's cool. You look at all the parts that have been printed and made. I, mean, I remember my daughter had a condition called um, Plagia Clefeli, Clefeli, I think it was called, where she had to wear a helmet when she was young. Yes, yes. I went and, out to a company and did it. Yeah, a case yeah, study. And, yeah, and basically those helmets, in the old days, we had to get them moulded and all the rest of it, but now they just print them. Really, really, and, and off printed in a bag, yep. and, and, and I mean medically, that's that's a game changer. Absolutely, an absolute game changer. Yeah, absolutely. Look, a pair of glasses there. Yeah. Oh, I mean, there you go. What do you think? Sorry, poor camera. I don't memory. think the colour suits. No, not the colour. Well, probably you know go, what? If the colour doesn't I'd suit, I'd probably go or- orange. If you'd I go orange. <laughs> but look at this. Just the the detailing and everything. It's a, it's it's. It's a different world. It's a sign. It is. It's a sign of the times, and we've got a lot to learn here, I think. But Absolutely. that's exactly what it's all about. Yes, yeah, right. a stand well worth visiting if you're coming here to yeah. Mac this week. So let's head back. Going to head back to the main um, stand where the machines have, are. You can of course catch uh, all of our live streams across the MTD CNC channels uh, for the rest of this week here at Mac, and also you can catch up on some of the other streams we've been doing this week whether you're watching on youtube linkedin instagram in fact as i said at the start of this we're actually streaming to 200,000 people um when you take the collective uh yeah the collective audience of all of our channels how was dominic he was brilliant as you would expect <laughs> no probably, change there <laughs> no he is good on camera isn't he he just knows his stuff i was talking to john but you know i i, I don't know if you know this and the audience do but uh john who i was talking about came from dyson as oh, a really? background, yes. Oh, wow. Okay. So the education that he knows and that company, how that grew so quickly. And he was is there. Is that why the carpet's so clean? <laughs> That's why the carpet's so clean. It's not there anymore, mind, is no. it? But uh, there's exciting times for Matt Silver. Yeah, no, no, I think from this side of things, the automation is is really everything that they talk about with Matsura. Dominic was great, Paul was great, Mark was great, Simon was great. You know, really good interviews. In fact, I had to go back and apologise to Dom because I think I cut him a bit short because he was really getting into his flow. He's excited. But um, there's plenty of videos on our channels from Matsura, from their customers. And, of course, um, you know, you can catch up on what we've done here. Right, OK. Well, we'll be back with you. I've got a live podcast uh, later on this four afternoon. Four o'clock, you're hosting. At four o'clock, I'm hosting, so do make sure you're watching them.